Thank you all so much for being here today. Uh, it's a gorgeous day, and we really appreciate you being here and using your voice to say what you stand for and what matters to you in your community. Here today, we're here to stand up and say no more needles in our parks. We want safe parks and we don't want needles in our parks. So I'm gonna ask you a very simple question. What do you want? No more needles in our parks. <laughs> when do you want it? Now. What do you want? No more needles in the parks. When do you want it? Now. All right, what do you want? No more needles in the parks. When do you want it? Now. Okay, so we're get, we've got a great little program for you today. And first off, we're going to invite Roxanne Hogue, who is a superstar. She happens to also be a mom. She has four children, believe it or not. And she ran for the board of supervisor position in this district. And she's amazing. She's a rock star. Come on up, Roxanne, and, and share some words with us. Roxanne, can you, can you spell your name? Good morning. Me? I can. I'm going to hold on to my purse because apparently we're in Santa Monica and it's not safe to just leave it somewhere. But that's very sad. Roxanne, R O X A N N E, Hogue, H O G E. Um, thank you so much, Jessica, and thank you everyone who has come out this morning and braved uh, the 405 like I did to get here. I used to live in Santa Monica when I first came to LA, and as Jessica mentioned, I had four children. And guess what that means? You have to move every time you have another child. So now I'm living in the northern reaches of north uh, of the valley uh, in North Hollywood, and that's what most people do. When we can't afford something, we go somewhere where we can afford it. And so I want to dispel, first of all, the first myth that our housing and homelessness crisis is a matter of affordability and housing. It is not. We have eyes. We know what we can see. Okay? People move when they can't afford something. It's the right to life, liberty, and happiness, not the pursuit of a condo in Santa Monica or beachfront property in Venice. So that's the first thing. Um, I really also have to say that I'm an immigrant uh, from Jamaica, island of, not New York. And I remember distinctly coming to America and my stepfather taking us on a road trip to Disney World in Florida and marveling as a 10 or 11 year old at how streets the, uh, the streets were so clean. And I said to him, how come the streets are so clean? And he said, because it's illegal to throw trash on the streets. And to me, that was one of the most amazing things about this country, that you could be so rich and so, and everyone just so committed to taking care of each other and the environment that the streets were clean. Flash forward 40 something years, and that's not the truth here. My country, uh, technically a third world country, has cleaner streets than the county of Los Angeles. One of the other things I found amazing about America that we didn't have, that a lot of countries don't have, and nobody knows this public libraries, free books for kids like me who are voracious readers who want to learn and visit different worlds. Guess what? We don't have that in this incredibly rich county, in the best state in the union. We've given away libraries, and now Lindsay Horvath and the ladies of The View want to give away all our parks. Do you know what parks are for children? Do you know what parks are and what they mean to people with no money, who live in boxes, who can't afford to move, who cram themselves into an apartment building? This is where they get green space. This is where they get air. This is where they get life and meet other kids and walk our dogs. Lindsay Horvath, when we were running, proudly said she was a dog mom. It's not safe for dogs to be around needles in parks, much less our children. But this is not a matter of just our children. This is not just for parents. And again, four children means you live in the valley, unless you're loaded. So, um, because you can only afford one kid here in Santa Monica. But people come here to enjoy this. This is about the children. I'm not telling them busy. Um, this is about the children that we are seeing on the streets every day. They look like adults to you, but they are each and every one of them someone's child. They have a mom 
They have a dad, they have brothers, they have sisters. Some of them even have wives or husbands. How dare you give them needles to encourage their addiction and their descent into madness and terror? How dare you do that to God's children, to all our children? Stop it. It breaks my heart to see people on the street like that. And we know what the road to hell is paved with, don't we? So it doesn't matter that people mean well, that they all have hate has no home here, signs in their windows. Those signs do nothing. But those needles and safe injection programs are worse than doing nothing. They're encouraging harm. They're giving bariatric surgery, gastric bypass and ozempic to anorexics. They are giving, as Jessica said, gift cards to seize candies to diabetics. They are destructive, incredibly disruptive. And let me just say one word about Barbara Ferrer. We know her as the fake doctor, because she is. She has a doctorate in one of the easiest things. And I, look, I'm not being mean, I'm quoting her. She went into public health because she couldn't hack science classes. She said that in a very extensive interview. Feel, I'll share it with you later. She said lots of interesting things. Next slide. She is not the most technically adept or intelligent person, but she does know one thing. She knows that there's gold in them thar hills. Harm reduction and safe injection and needle programs cost money and people get a nice payday from encouraging them. I don't care what you do in the privacy of your own home. I really don't. But this park is not the privacy of your own home. This park belongs to people, it belongs to children, it belongs to dog walking people, it belongs to seniors, it belongs to anyone, women especially, who deserve safety. Stop it, stop it now, please, for the love of God, Lindsay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Roxanne. Let's give Roxanne a great shout out. So, okay, because we love to do this, we're going to do our second chant. <laughs> and this is so much more fun to chant with. Is it working? Yeah. It's working. Okay, great. So, you're just going to repeat after me, and then we're going to get in the flow. To Needles in the Park, we say no. We say no. David White's got to go. In 2019, our co-founder John Alley went for a walk with a mom in the parks and guess what he found? Uh, needles everywhere, but in addition to needles, he found a program handing out needles in our parks. So then um, it took quite some time, but he showed up to city council and he uh, let everybody know at city council that what was going on. And so it took them a while. But in September of 2022, Sue Himmelrich, our mayor, wrote a letter to the county and said, we don't want needles in our park. This has to stop. So nothing happened. <laughs> February of 2023, the Santa Monica Coalition got together and we said, you know what? Nothing's happening. We got to do something about it. We started a petition. We now have a petition of 22,000 letters sent to our, our officials all the way up to Gavin Newsom. And guess what? Nothing happened. In June of 2023, our city manager, David White, who needs to be fired, wrote a joint statement with the Department of Public Health in collaboration with them. They actually helped each other write the thing out and uh, supporting needles in our parks. Um, and then nothing happened. So. Obviously, he went rogue because the city council had said, we don't want this. So we, we filed a lawsuit in February of this year, 2024, yeah. and uh, it took some time, but something great happened. Last Tuesday, four of our council members, including Mayor Phil Brock, Oscar De La Torre, Lana Negrete, and Christina Parra signed a resolution one more time saying, no more needles in our park. So today, we have the pleasure of inviting them to come up and speak with us here. 
and we're very grateful for what they've done, but we need to get this finished. We need to end it, we need to stop it. Because apparently just having the city council say something doesn't work in this community. So we're standing up, we're telling Gleam Davis, you need to fire David White, you need to do what's right. And um, all that being said, I'm going to invite up our mayor, Phil Brock. We're so happy that you're here today. And uh, Phil, before you start, I need to tell you that uh, at the city council, they put us on a timer and it beeps really loud when our time is up. So Phil, you got five minutes. We're gonna do this to all of you today. It's kind of payback, it's only fair. So Phil, you got five minutes. We're doing it in good humor. Come on up, tell us what you're doing for our city. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm happy to see all of you here. And I'm very happy to see that this park is the cleanest it's been in a year or two this morning. So I thank our city staff and police department for taking action. But more importantly, we have a long time problem in three of our parks, in Reed Park, in Tongva Park, and Palisades Park. The county is distributing clean syringes and needles. They don't tell me, they don't tell us how many they get back, but they distribute them here in this park. Now I want you to look around for a minute. I have two children's playgrounds right here. I have a tall senior citizen complex across the street. For that complex, this is their only breathing room. This is their only green space. I've got 678 children across the street at St. Monica's Prep Elementary and High School. Less than a half a block south of here, I've got the Boys and Girls Clubs, which can have up to 300 kids a day in that facility. Now in between, there's this park, one of only three parks north of Wilshire Boulevard in the city of Santa Monica. This is the park that I grew up in, that I played in, that I did my first play in. This has been my neighborhood park since I was born. And when we have asked the county to stop distributing syringes and needles outside in this park, the county has ignored our elected officials now for over two and a half years. Vice Mayor Negrete, who you'll hear from in a couple of minutes, brought this issue to the City Council's attention. The county had never asked the city if they should be distributing syringes or needles outside in our city parks. We've now, last Tuesday, the council majority in Santa Monica voted once again to demand that the county health department cease the delivery of syringes and needles outside in this park. We have all said, we have all said that we want to reduce the episodes of hepatitis, reduce the episodes of AIDS. That's a worthy consideration, but that can be done inside a facility where people also are taught, uh, they, they get a discussion at least started about getting clean, about not killing their cells with fentanyl, which is a poison, not a drug not killing themselves with trank, not killing themselves with meth. Because at this point, Santa Monica is an extremely compassionate city. We want to help people, but it's not. I'll repeat, it's not compassionate to see our residents, our homeless people in our city die on the streets of Santa Monica. And so the county under the guise of reducing hepatitis, under the guise of reducing AIDS, is facilitating the killing of homeless people by themselves, by their own needle. That needs to stop in our city. It needs to stop, frankly, in every city in LA County. The county has ancient statistics that talk briefly about harm reduction. I talk about harm reduction to our children, our custodians, our groundskeepers, people in our city that need to be safe. It is an imperative that this needle syringe program ends in Santa Monica's parks. I want this park safe enough that people from the neighborhood, children have their birthday parties here, mm -hmm. 
people play here. Seniors from across the street get to play chess and checkers, and everyone gets to use this park because this is the lungs of our most densely populated neighborhood in Santa Monica. So very simply, Barbara Farrar and LA County Health, stop, stop the distribution of syringes and needles outside in our city. It, it can't be, we, we can no longer have a situation where county health is supposed to protect all of us mm -hmm. as decided that they will distribute drug paraphernalia in our parks. I, I'm pleased that they want to distribute Narcan. I'm pleased that they have street teams that want to go out and help people get off drugs. People have a chance to regain their lives. People have a chance to reunite with their families. We're all for that in Santa Monica. We spend more money than almost any other city in LA County. And I hear my buzzer going off, I like that. Not as loud as it should be. But very simply, my pledge as a mayor and our pledge as a city council is to do our best to keep Santa Monicans safe, to keep our visitors safe, to keep our tourists and our workforce safe in our city. We can't do that when LA County doesn't support us. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Mayor. So, here we go. We're on to our third chant of the day. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Better be short, Jessica. <laughs> Better be short. Okay, well, it depends on how fast you make this chant. Repeat after me once, and then we're going to get it. It's pretty easy. One more time. No more needles in our park. No more needles in our park. No more crime after dark. No more crime after dark. Okay, see I can do all kinds of things. That, uh, we had a meeting with Barbara Frere a couple weeks ago in her uh, little cohort, Dr. Gary Sion. Uh, not sure what to say of uh, their psychiatrist, Brian Hurley. He smiles a lot. Um, and we asked for no needles in our parks. Um, they said that there was never going to be a harm reduction program that didn't include needles in the parks and if anything she was going to push needles even harder than ever. While we were at that meeting she said, you know, in Santa Monica if you cut a deal with us and you give us safe injection sites maybe we'll consider taking the needles out of the parks. That's what she had to say to us. We also found out that their program last year was three million dollars for harm reduction. This year it's at $34 million for this very specific program in Los Angeles County. And they're intending on doubling it for next year. How many needles are they trying to spread across LA County? Just, just sit on that for a minute. Something very important to know about Lindsay Horvath. She was at a meeting at the Santa Monica Democratic Club and when she was asked about this program and whether or not she supported it, her answer was, listen, we need the needles. And we need needles because we need to be able to connect to those living on our streets and in our parks. And this is our way to talk to them. It's really hard to talk to them. And if we don't have a needle to extend, we can't talk to them. That is an absolute outrage for the people who work in the services industry. I'm a social worker and I have no problem speaking to anybody on the street and it's never required a needle. Just sit on that. But while you sit on that, I'm gonna welcome up Vice Mayor Lana Negrete, and I hope I, it's Vice Mayor and not some other fancy name. Vice Tempore, something f fancy. Anyway, uh, Lana, come pe speak up. You have three minutes, dear. That's a long time. Well, it's so great to be here because this is where I'm born and raised, Santa Monica. I grew up going to this park. I still go to this church. And I'm a renter, so parks for me are really important because they are my front and backyard, as I don't have one. And like many of the residents here in Santa Monica, whether it be our elderly, our children, or just people enjoying some open space during lunch break, we rely on our parks to be safe places. When I got appointed to council first before I was elected, I was here doing Mommy and Me music as a way to sort of curtail the activity that was happening in the park. I thought if we could get 
parents and families together, we could take over our park and take our park back. And during that time, a woman named Ashley, who was a mother, came up to me and she said, excuse me, are you an elected official? My daughter, who has, who's a, she was three at the time, um, who has to use needles for her diabetes, picked up one of these needles thinking it was hers. Another man came over and said, my son stepped on a needle and it went in his foot. We had to take him to the hospital and we didn't know if it was an unused needle. And we all know, because I know this was said in a council meeting the other day, when a needle hits the ground, it's dirty. Unless you're having somebody use it with, you know, in a medical situation, you can assume it's a dirty needle. I was floored. I didn't understand where these needles were coming from. And I brought it up in a discussion at city council and nobody seemed to know about this program. I was asked by this parent group to come back on the day they were handing out the programs. And what I witnessed is what I was most appalled by. It was not a one-for-one -one exchange. Let me take your dirty needle and dispose of it, and let me give you a clean one in hopes that today, if you inject yourself, you're eliminating the possibility of getting um, an infectious disease. However, what was happening was bags of needles, over 10, 20 needles were being handed and left at the park. Some were being exchanged with other members between each other, not by a professional. There was nobody being offered any services, and when I asked them about how this program works, they said, we're trying to meet the needs of addicts where they are. I have to tell you, my half-brother and my uncle are addicts, meth addicts. It has destroyed our family, and it hurts to my core. As somebody who supports Claire Matrix program, as my brother was a resident and recipient and now lives in a sober living home out of the state, I can tell you what it's done to our family. I stand here as a mother, I stand here as a resident, I stand here as a sister and a niece to addicts to meth and the opioid addiction crisis and what it's done to our families. And I can tell you right now that not one of us who are parents, if we caught our kids using in the bedroom, would say, honey, let me bring you a clean needle. We wouldn't do that. We would get them the help that they need. And everybody here, as someone mentioned before, is somebody's son or daughter. We need to get them the help that they need. Over 106,000 people died of drug overdoses in 2021, and that number is on the rise. I'm sorry, but we do not have a hepatitis epidemic. We have an opioid epidemic. People are dying on our streets at our church, and next to them are needles. You can smoke meth and fentanyl and other opioids, and you can take them by pill form. I run a nonprofit organization that helps at-risk youth. I was once an at-risk youth. I give back for that reason. And I'm telling you that shooting up drugs by way of needle is the quickest way to die. And so we stand here not to say that this is a, this should not be a partisan issue. This should be a common sense issue. Let's stop making things political back there, Jason Mastabob. Let's stop making things political. You're filming from the back of the room to make this a political issue. I look forward to seeing myself on Twitter later on today. This is not a political issue. This issue is common sense. It's about the safety of those that are addicts and it's about the safety of everybody. Thank you, Lana. Thank you for speaking the truth. Ugh, these timers, I don't know how they do that at city council. So, okay. So now, I know we're, we're but we're, see, we're more generous. Um, so now I'm bringing up Oscar, Oscar De La Torre, council member, Santa Monica resident. Come on up. Thank you, actually, um, I want all three of you here. I don't think uh, Christine is here yet, but I'll, I'll have quickly, I have a little something for you. Um, so I have a little, we have a little gift for you for coming out. Phil, could you come please? We're gonna have a little photo up because see at city council, they also give away um, all these beautiful forms and, and, and certificates. So we too at the Santa Monica Coalition have a gift for you for your hard work and dedication to our community. So, Phil, are you here? Where's yeah, Phil? Coming. Phil's coming. Okay, could you stand next to your two council members? So at the Santa Monica Coalition, we just wanna thank you for coming and, and being the voice of your constituents, those who elected you, and for all your hard work. And we urge you to continue along this path. There's a long way to go. And uh, just as a little thank you and a reminder, uh, here's a little gift bag. There are no needles in this bag. Here's your bag, Phil. There you go. You could give this one to Oscar. 
There, there's a beautiful t-shirt in there for you. I think you might enjoy it. Thank you so much. Now um, I'm passing the mic on to Oscar. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. It's great to uh, see all the uh, Santa Monicans out here today uh, united, united for common sense. And I'm really, I'm really glad uh, Councilwoman Negrete pointed out that this shouldn't be a partisan issue. This is about common sense. Um, you know, a lot of people are talking about reports and, and, and the science, you know, and data. They keep on saying, you know, uh, you got to look at these reports that say that this reduction in harm approach is the right approach. This is the way that we save lives. Well, I had a meeting with uh, Dr. Sai. Um, there was, a, there was a, a, a discussion in terms of, you know, the approach that they have, this reduction in harm, this meet them where they're at. And one thing that I learned is, from, in terms of the data, um, he, he, did, he pointed out that we've had an increase in overdose deaths. So it's just skyrocketed. And two, in uh, 2017, we had 200 plus overdose deaths in LA County in 2017, 200 plus, like 258 if I remember exactly. In 2022, there were more than 3,000, it was like 3,000 plus overdose deaths in Los Angeles County. That is a crisis. When I asked well, why, what's the number one reason, he said two drugs, fentanyl and uh, crystal meth. But then when I asked, well, do you have data on how they're ingesting the drug? You know, are they snorting it, are they smoking it, or are they shooting it? And he said that he didn't have that data, that we don't have the data. And I go, well, it sounds to me, I asked, I go, do you feel that it's, that it's a, uh, there is, it's a greater risk to shoot the drugs versus the other other ways of consuming the drugs. He said, I don't know, we don't have that data. And I said, hold on, to me it seems like it's common sense, right? That shooting up drugs is way more dangerous. And it probably explains why we have the astronomical number of overdose deaths in LA County. And I thought to myself, you know, if we had a crisis of people shooting themselves in the head, why would the government be handing out handguns? It makes no sense, right? It makes no sense. 70% of the residents of the city of Santa Monica are renters, 70%. The great majority of people living in our city depend on public parks, depend on our beaches, depend on the public space for their own... 360 strong already. Okay, 360, mostly seniors, that are living right across the street from the park and they can't enjoy this park. But what about the, well, the well-being and the mental health of renters? They deserve for us to protect their well-being and their mental health. We, we need to protect the public space. And so for us uh, being here today, it's, it's, it's really about a debate on the approach. We're not saying that a program uh, you know, a, a, a needle exchange program done within a clinic where people need to go, you know, to get services and maybe there's a counselor there, maybe there's other support uh, services for people. We're not saying that that's wrong. Well, we're saying that it's wrong to be bringing the needles into the parks, to meet them where they're at. That that approach right there makes no sense. It's, it's, it, it definitely, the data isn't there yet, but it, it, it for sure has to do with the number of overdose deaths that's happening in, in LA County, and we want it to change. We've had letters sent, we're signing on to resolutions, there's now a lawsuit that people have to engage in, and you know, that's way out of hand. I think what we need is state legislation, we need legislation from the state to make sure that we, as cities, have local control over how programs are implemented in our community. It's not a one size fits all. We need to have a say. We need to be able, so we need our Senator Ben Allen, we need our Assembly Member Chavez Zbur to pass that legislation, to give cities some influence, some, some uh, voice in the implementation of these programs. Because the way it's working out right now in our city, we see the devastation, we see the people passed out, we see the people that are self-destruction, self right? Self-destruction in our parks. And we don't think that's compassionate we don't think that's good policy for people that are homeless. We definitely see that that's having an impact on residents, on people that deserve to come to parks, that expect to see parks 
where children are playing, where people are getting recreation, where they're having a good time and enjoying themselves. It's for the well-being of people, not for people to be using illegal and very harmful and very dangerous substances. So with that, I want to thank you all very much for being here because this is going to send a very strong message. I thank the media for being here because we need to get this message out. That Santa Monica is not against a well-run program indoors, in clinics, but we definitely are against the approach of meeting them where they're at, bringing them into the parks. Parks are for children, parks are for people, for recreation, for people's well-being. And that's what we want to do, and that's what we're fighting for here today. Thank you, and God bless. Really quickly, what do you want? No needles. No needles, no needles in the park. When do you want it? Now. What do you want? No needles in the park. When do you want it? Now. What do you want? No needles in the park. When do you want it? Now. And look at this gorgeous sign. Thank you, Elaine. Elaine Golden Geller, right there, made that gorgeous sign for us today. Okay, so now that we did this great chant, let me tell you a quick, another quick story about that fabulous meeting we had a few weeks ago in Van Nuys with Barbara Ferrer and her team. Um, she, Barbara Ferrer made the introductions in that meeting and she, she started us off and she came in with a really soft tone and um, you know, she talked about the stigma against substance abusers in our parks and um, just how negative we are about, you know, people who are struggling on the streets and in our parks. And, uh, you know, I, I, I definitely feel really bad and very sad and my heart stops every single time I actually see somebody struggling. I can't help it, I'm an empath and I'm a social worker. But then she followed that with, you know, the problem is that people don't understand and they don't like substance abuse abuse users and I was just like what are you talking about that is not the majority of our population human beings are naturally supportive of other human beings and so then she compared illegal substance users in our parks to diabetics she said that they're they're the same thing and if only the public could see that illegal drug users in our parks are the same as diabetics. And she repeated that three times in this meeting. Is she using needles? <laughs> it's, a, it's a good question. Somebody just asked, is Barbara Ferrer using needles? <laughs> I would say that there is a major difference between illegal substance abusers in our parks is one, they're using an illegal substance. The, na the word illegal. Two, uh, I've never seen diabetics come to the park and, and chuck their needles on the ground. Um, they tend to be very more, they tend to be responsible with their actions. And um, diabetics need needles in order to survive. Um, and also the other difference is, and it was already said here today, and, and I, I made the comment at that meeting, is I would never, I, I seriously doubt a single medical professional has written a prescription to a diabetic to, to for a gift card to go to the candy store. So um, anyway, that was just a little side note. So um, I am going to bring up a resident uh, from our community who has been very vocal and very active in our community and has a lot to say. He, he walks his uh, dog in our, in our streets and he really loves this community. He's done a lot of work for our community and he has a uh, few words for us to say today. Arthur, you're up, and you've got three minutes. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. My name's Arthur Jayon. Uh, I will try to keep this to three minutes. Thank you, Jessica. Um, I've lived within two blocks of Reed Park for 25 years, and I've seen the change in the, uh, the, the atmosphere and the people that come here and use drugs. I've been attacked twice, um, once with a deadly weapon, by somebody high on drugs. The other person was also high on drugs. So this is extremely personal to me. My, my wife wants to move out of Santa Monica and I refuse to do it. It's actually created some problems. But I, uh, everybody's been so articulate here and our politicians have been so articulate here that it's, um, it's almost, uh, uh, <laughs> 
we have a little bit of a, a no, ruckus going on no, no, over no, there. No, no, no. But uh, I just want to, everybody's been so articulate, and I don't want to repeat what people have said, but I was at a meeting with the uh, City uh, Council Parks and Recs um, and Gary Sai, and I was the only uh, resident there, and so when I had my two minutes to ask questions, I asked them, um, uh, if this was happening in your neighborhood, would you want it in your neighborhood? Would you have harm reduction in your neighborhood? And do you have a needle distribution program in the park near you? And Gary Sai, who's head of the entire program in LA County said, I'm not sure. Well, the other thing he said at that meeting was himself. He said, we only collect about 40% of the needles that we distribute. And that, that's, that was, said at a, at a meeting so um so i, I just want to just say what i'm seeing here is a kind of luxury belief system of people that are out of touch are not really present to what's happening on the streets don't have to live with the results of what's going on of being afraid to walk around your neighborhood of being uh told to get out of my park by a high drug addict which happened to me and so it's, it's this luxury belief system where they can impose a kind of regime, a, a zombie policy of uh, you know, harm reduction, which was actually invented back in the time of uh, the HIV crisis when the drug of choice was heroin. And people lived a long time on the streets taking heroin. They don't now. They, they die so quickly and I just toggled between rage and sadness living in this neighborhood and walking around this park. It's 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 horrendous. So I I'm I'm just I just wanted to add my voice here. I've been a gadfly on this issue for about six years. I, I will continue to do what I can, and I, I would just really encourage everybody here to write your city council members. They need to hear it. They hear you. They listen to. Believe me. Everybody reads my stuff now. It's taken a long time, but I hear from council members. I hear from David White. Uh, you know, they pay attention, and it's raw politics. This is what it comes down to. So if you want to, you know, change things, get involved and uh, make, your, make your voices heard. And this is a great start. So thanks so much. Arthur J on J-E-O-N. <laughs> so one more time, I just want to take the opportunity to thank all of you for being here today. We're not done. We've got one great speaker who's about to speak. But I just want to thank you all for being here. We know that we have parks commissioners here. We know that they have done what they can do and that they have come and showed up and, and voiced their opinion on having needles in the parks and they are against needles in the parks. So we thank them for showing up today. Again, we thank our city officials for being here. We thank all of you in the crowd. We thank the media for coming out. And I'd also like to give a huge shout out to the Santa Monica Coalition for organizing this event and for our, our founders, John Alley, thank you so much. Jessica, thank you so much for your work. Uh, and our other founders uh, for, for doing this hard work and, and, and fighting every day for our city. Um, and then uh, before I bring up, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring up our fourth council member who voted to, for this resolution to get needles out of our parks, uh, Christine Para. But before I do that, we're gonna do our fourth chant that you have not heard yet. And I have to switch to the megaphone, I'm so sorry. All right, can you hear me? Okay, so it's the three-liner. And it starts with gleam, gleam. Don't let us down. Fire this clown. Okay, now we're going to say it all together, right? Gleam, gleam. Don't let us down. Fire this clown. One more time. Gleam, gleam. Don't let us down. Fire this clown. And in case you're not all aware of this, let me be very specific as to why David White needs to be fired. There are seven council members at City Council uh, in Santa Monica. You need four to hire a city manager, you need five to fire them. 
We have a rogue city manager. He is operating against the will of the majority of residents in Santa Monica. It is unacceptable. Gleam Davis, Caroline Tarosis, and Jesse Zwick voted against removing needles in our parks. Gleam is up for re-election. We need to let her know. Gleam, it's up to you, girl. Not only that, she has been in this community for so many years. If she is going to represent the majority of the voices in our community, she needs to stand up and fire David White. Now, uh, let me welcome Christine Parr. Christine, I have a little gift bag for you. Our other uh, council members already received it, and, and so you get the honor of having one too. And thank you for making your way here today. I know it was really hard to get here. Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you so much for, for having this rally today and for really kind of um, being a voice for this cause. This is something that is actually near and dear to my heart as a, a mom um, who has raised three kids in this community and is still raising three kids in this community and um, who've attended school uh, directly across the street for the last 14 years. And so I am a true testament to what I've seen uh, day in and day out. Um, sorry, I have to speak a little bit louder. I'm a little <laughs> sorry. Um, but you know, I can testify um, to what I've seen day in and day out when taking my children to school. And I think that most important here, you know, among everything else is that we protect our children. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of layers, but our children do not, do not, need to be exposed to open drug use, period. Uh, end of statement, end of line, that's just not okay. And I can tell you, I can tell you how many times, 10, 20, 15, 30, 40 times, that I've had to shield my child, misdirect my child, as I was walking to my car to and from school every day. That's 14 years. 14 years of having to do that because somebody was openly using drugs here, right here. And as you can see, again, the school is right there. On two occasions, um, someone lost their life, um, allegedly as a result of an overdose on our school campus. One time, the body was found directly to the left of our school front doors. <sighs> Sorry. And then one day, bringing my kid to school, there was ambulances and law enforcement all here because there was another sad soul who lost his life right there. There was another day right here that someone decided to slit his nut. Our children go to school here. They do not deserve to see this and be a part of this every day. We are not here as council members to say that harm reduction doesn't work. Absolutely not. What we are here to do is to protect our community, protect our parks, and protect our children. And that's what we're here to do. This is about local control. This is about collaboration. And this is about being partners. And this is about keeping our community safe. Safe. Council member Tracy Parks said it so eloquently recently. Our residents and our community are sick and tired of feeling unsafe. And so this is one of the first of many steps that we are trying to take to help our community, to help ourselves, to help our children to feel safe. So thank you. What do you want? When you want it? Now. What do you want? When do you want it? Now. What do you want? No when you want it no. that's right thank you so much for coming everybody you can reach us at the Santa Monica Coalition org you can see us on Instagram every every single day at Santa Monica Coalition you can find us on YouTube you can find us all over the place give us your name please oh can we get a picture of everybody so uh, my name, Jessica Rogers, J-E-S-S-I-C-A, uh, last name, Rogers, R-O-G-E-R-S. I'm, I'm a co-founder of the Santa Monica Coalition.
Okay, so everybody right here. Tell us who you are and why you're well, I'm a co-founder of the Santa Monica Coalition, and we're here for a protest to end the needles in our parks. And I'm a mom in a minivan who really just cares about kids. Everybody's kids. She also happened to run for a board of supervisor position for our district and did an incredible job. Just a concerned mom trying to make her parks safe. It seems, it seems to be a recurring theme. Uh, it seems kind of obvious to me that parks should be for Don't forget Susan Collins yeah. over here. Children yeah. and adults. I didn't mean to skip you on the left. That's okay. That's quite all right. I'm like everyone else here. I just want the parks to be returned to the public. Yeah. yeah. It, it, you know, to me, the parks were built so that our children and us as adults would go out and have exercise and recreation. Not as a There's place. There's a place for needles. I agree. That's under medical use to provide location. Exactly. Which is where the needles are. I have no idea. It tells you that the programs work because they have wraparound services. We commend Jessica and everybody associated with. The into all of the members of the Santa Monica Coalition. If you're not a member yet, just go to the Santa Monica Coalition.org and sign up. You just click a, a button called Join, and there you are. You're a member of our coalition. Okay, so you heard that, everybody. It's Santa Monica Coalition. Our YouTube channel originally was about riding my bike and my adventures around the world. I live in Pinemark Park, Venice, and our community has just been destroyed. And I see what's happening over here, and it's the same agenda. So I'm. Hi, I'm Danny Slant here, and uh, I'm a neighbor here. I live in uh, nearby uh, Penmar Park, Venice, uh, and uh, I really believe in the issue that we had today here for the protest, which is basically we don't want needle exchange programs being done in our park. Let's restore the sanity to our community. Parks are for recreation of children and adults. They are not places to have mentally ill drug addicts congregate and shoot up dope. It's as simple as that. So, yeah, let's uh, make sure that we emphasize the County of LA not to try to keep increasing these budgets to do these programs, especially without touching base with the city elected officials and getting the constituents to actually agree and vote upon it. Thank you very much. kids at the Boys and Girls Club every day, half a block down. So you have a thousand kids, two children's playgrounds, and a senior complex right here. And this is the densest, densely, most densely populated part of Santa Monica. How do you justify handing out needles? By the way, they have no metrics on how many are returned. You know, a mayor in another, I just heard this yesterday, a mayor in another city was inspecting his drug area right and looking at the homeless area and got stabbed in the foot uh, through a shoe by a needle. Had to go through a hepatitis yeah. AIDS protocol. I don't want, I, I don't care if you're five, three, like that young uh, lad over there, or you're 85. Doesn't matter. You shouldn't be having to worry about needles in the park and it draws more people here. Look at, I want hepatitis and AIDS lesson. I want that risk lesson. That can be done inside in, a, in an environment where they can get treatment if they need to get a needle. Right now all we're doing is we're saying to them, we want you not to get hepatitis, we not, want you not to get AIDS, but we're happy as hell if you kill yourself. That's not compassion in this city. So what are we going to do about a million dollar units for the yeah. uh, We're not paying for those, remember. I, it's us the Fed. Yeah, it's not it will be achieved here today. I'm not sure if anything will be achieved, but I think it will draw more attention to the fact that the Los Angeles County Health Department is refusing to listen to the wishes of the residents of Santa Monica and their elected officials, our city council. Uh, they need to listen. I've got 700 uh, children at St. Monica's across street, 200 kids at the Boys and Girls Club, less than a half a block south of here, two uh, children's playgrounds here, and a, a large senior citizen complex across the street. Now today the park looks beautiful, but most days we have 15 to 20, 25, 30 uh, homeless individuals in the park. It's not that they're homeless. It's that many of them happen to also be heavy drug users. And if they're taking fentanyl, fentanyl is not a drug. 
it is a poison. So at that analysis, you're spreading poison in the neighborhood under the guise of, re of reducing the evidence and the, the occurrences of AIDS and hepatitis, both absolutely laudable causes. But let's do that work inside. Let's do that work where someone can also talk to them about getting clean, about rejoining their lives and trying to stay alive. Because what we're doing by handing them syringes and hypodermic needles is saying, we're fine if you kill yourself. That sounds very stark, it sounds terrible to say, but that's in fact what we're doing. We lose at least one to three on our streets each and every week due to overdoses. That's unacceptable to the residents of the city. What do you think needs to happen here today, this morning, in order to be able to look back at us and say, and call it a success? I think that Los Angeles County Health Department pivots, that Barbara Farrar pivots, that they put uh, their drug program into a rich environment where people can get help, where there are psychological services, psychiatric services, where drug rehab is something that is the first request. If you have to have a needle, we want it to end. We don't want it to keep going. So to me, it's over the next few weeks, not today, but over the next few weeks, if Los Angeles County listens to the elected officials of the city of Santa Monica, period. After today, what more can be done? I've requested another meeting. Uh, Barbara Ferrar has refused to meet with me uh, individually for two and a half years. I've made a, yet another request that Barbara Farrar and the County Health Department sits down with us. It's absurd that they're not willing to sit down with the leader of a city of 93,000 people, not willing to sit down with the council majority of that city and work out a solution. Right now, they're just saying, well, we have the authority, we'll do what we want. That's inappropriate for a County Health Department director to be saying to the mayor of a city and their county. If I may play devil's advocate, why do you think this is not a 70-0 unanimous council uh, uh, feeling, I suppose? Why, have, why is council split over this? We issue? have a, a clear divide in this city on two things. One, public safety. I have several council members who were never gung-ho on providing the public safety that our residents want, need, and deserve. Uh, the four of us walk these parks. This is the park I grew up in. Reed Park is where I grew up. This is where I play. There used to be a lot of bushes here, a lot of places I could hang out and play. That theater is where I did my first play at 12 years old. All four of the council members who were against the continuation of this program in our parks and near our schools, whether public or private, grew up in this community. I think that's one big difference. We know how this community can be, we know how this community was, and we know that the safety of everyone in our community, from five days old to 95 years old, is our responsibility as city council people. And we have to make sure as much as we can, that while we're compassionate to those who are unhoused, we're also compassionate to our residents, compassionate to our businesses. It's important to have all three mixed together. And we're not trying to push our homeless people out. We want help for them. I have been incessant in my request for more street side social services since I got elected to the council. The fact that a block of council members have a different view. That's absolutely their right. It's their right to disagree. I don't think it's their right to lessen the safety of all of our residents. And finally, uh, to, the, to the residents of Santa Monica who are looking on this, maybe they're not quite sure how they themselves feel. What can you say to reassure them? Comes right back to what I just said. It is every mayor, every city council person's obligation to keep the people in their city safe. 
That's the first most sacred obligation, not only here in Santa Monica, but throughout the world. So for me, I'm a resident here. Every resident in this community are my neighbors. That's what I pledged to do when I ran for election, was to help my neighbors. So for me, that's really important. And I want residents to know we're absolutely not trying to, to uh, minimize the danger from hepatitis, minimize the danger from AIDS. But I've had park employees, groundskeepers, I've had custodians and innocent people, all of them were innocent, but uh, be hurt and be stabbed by these needles and have to go through hepatitis and AIDS protocol. The fear of something happening in this park keeps people away from enjoying this park. That's, that's wrong. We have too few parks in Santa Monica. This is one of only two parks, three parks, sorry, three parks between Wilshire Boulevard and the North City limits. We have less parks. This is the most densely populated part of the city. It's our obligation to make sure that everyone comes here and has their birthday parties, that they have, that they wait here while they're waiting for communion, that their families can come here, that seniors from across the street at Westminster Towers can come here to play chess and checkers. And just to be outside, it, it's so crucial. I, I've talked a lot this year about adding trees adding more open spaces in the new apartment houses, making sure that we all have a chance to breathe and see a butterfly which is right behind you. And all those things are so important to our residents. So I, I want people to get help, desperately want people to get help. And we've taken three new initiatives just this year to try and keep, get people more help in the community. But handing out hypodermic needles, Handing out syringes uh, is wrong in this park. If you want to hand out Narcan in this park, absolutely do it. I'm fine with handing out Narcan everywhere in the city. And I'm fine with Venice Family Clinic or another organization making sure that uh, they offer the needed supplies in a place where people can also be uh, re can also receive help, or at least the offer of help. The object is to reduce the issues on our streets. The object is to make sure all these people live. The object is not to let people die on our streets. That's what I'm against. I'm against anybody dying on the streets of Santa Monica. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hi, how are you? Why are we arresting? Is that why they're all here?